Symptoms of thyroid dysfunction sometimes are a little bit harder to detect in pregnancy because there are a lot of symptoms of pregnancy itself. So it's a common condition to discover in pregnancy, partially because in pregnancy women tend to see doctors more often than they do at other times of their lives. And there's been an enormous amount of data published in the last five years in this field. And so it was felt by the American Thyroid Association that it was really time to review that and to revise the guidelines and make new recommendations. So some of the changes that might occur with thyroid dysfunction in pregnancy might be fairly subtle and just picked up on laboratory testing. So for example, an overactive thyroid or hyperthyroidism has classic symptoms like feeling anxious and shaky and frequent bowel movements. These are all things that sometimes happen in pregnancy anyway. And the way most people use guidelines um, is to sort of dip into them when clinical questions arise. And we, and we think that will have important implications for clinical care because it may result in fewer women being appropriate, inappropriately labeled as having an abnormality in pregnancy and may lead to less inappropriate treatment. That even when we can't necessarily say definitively that we know what the right answer is for clinical care, there's real value in putting together the evidence and explaining reasoning and why you might lean on one side or the other. And I think that will be really helpful for clinicians and maybe for patients too.